so that we can be doctors and lawyers and engineers. So what you're really eating is not the cow. What you're really eating is not the grass. You're eating the will of God, you see. But it's in a form that most of us can't understand. We haven't been taught to like adults, you know. In most religious traditions, we are treated as children with a fantasy form of religion. So what I just recited from the Quran, the sacred book of the Muslims, can never be changed. And let me tell you this, um, people. You'll hear this sometime, maybe you'll be an old man some of you. You're going to hear that when the world governments get into serious problems, where those world governments do not know how to get out of the problems, they consult the book of the Muslims called the Quran. They consult it. They consult the life of Muhammad the Prophet, to see how he handled social issues, uh, and, and, and issues between the tribes, you see. They consult our religion. And most people say, oh, I don't believe this. You will not see it most of the time by your congressmen as the way you know them. But among those congressmen are people who are called Masons and Shrine of Masons. And the highest degree that they get to is a 32 degree, 37 degree. And at that point, they learn that Jesus is not God. They learn that Allah is God. They learn that the Bible is not the complete scripture. They learn the Quran is the complete scripture. They know this. This is on the internet, I'm telling you. Anybody want to challenge me? My number is 772-643-2791. Please invite me to the debate. I'll be happy to come. Okay. <laughs> when it's all over, we're going to shake hands. So you're going to certainly teach me something. And I know I'm going to teach you something. Ain't no question about it. Because I have God's word. And God's word is complete. <clears throat> so when we say God, I was just talking with a woman downstairs. We say Allah. You say Elohim. You say Yahweh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The force that controls you while you are sleeping. The force that controls the rotation of this planet, the force that has given birth to galaxies right now as women give birth to children, that force that never changes is Allah. And he is doing all of this by himself. He has no son. He has no daughter. He has no consort. We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth, the real creation. And those of you, you have scripture, that you Muslims be patient with me. You have scripture, and your scripture says that no man has seen God. Please listen to this. And if you see God, you will die. This is not the Quran, this is another scripture. So therefore, if it says the other scripture says no man has seen God, and if you will see God, you will surely die. Then it is telling you, I'm talking about the Bible, is saying itself that Jesus was not God. Because they saw Jesus. And the Bible said, if you see Jesus, you will surely die. Meaning that if you see God, you will surely die. They saw him with their eyes, and they remained alive. So there's proof right in their own scripture that he was not God. I love it. So why in the world would he give us a, 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 an image of a man as God? As a male man, I'm talking about a male. Why? It's to keep women in second class situations where she will not complain. Good God, my problem is one time I jump up and clap my feet again. That I have a religion that has revealed what's really going on. Most women will take a bunch of foolishness. They would take indecent, pejorative statements against them and will say nothing. Why? Because they've been given a religion where the man is God. So if the man is God, the man is what? The superior and the woman is the what? Inferior. I'm showing you the Islamic religion how it is a, it is a freedom movement. 
and all that. Now, why would the woman be in an inferior position when she is the one that gives you birth? Your daddy's not pregnant with you for nine months. Your daddy's not going to feed you every two hours when, you, when you're newly born. Who's going to do all of that sacrifice? It's going to be the woman. So how is she all of a sudden the inferior? How is she the one that's, that's the problem in the society? It's for manipulation. And all of us men in this room, we should fight that because we have mothers. We have daughters. We have sisters. We have wives and we are Muslims. And we should not tolerate anything that's going to degenerate the status of a woman in the minds of the public. We men have to take that position. Inshallah, it's getting better. Allah my God. Because honorable men, you cannot rise any higher than your woman. The first teacher is the woman. So if you denigrate the woman, you are really denigrating yourself. It's just a matter of time. So this is a religion <clears throat> of originality, <clears throat> meaning that you, you, you cannot change this religion. The way we pray, we've been praying like this way, 1,400 years. Our mosques have been bombed. <laughs> Whole Muslim nation, eight Muslim nations have been bombed by the West, America included. It's talking about they're going after ISIS and uh, uh, the other uh, Islamic State. That's not what they're going after. That's an excuse. And this is on the internet. That's an excuse. You are really attacking the religion. I'm telling you what you're doing. Okay? You start to hope that you would you would disillusion the Muslim population so that the Muslim population would never rise and compete for the minds of the masses of the globe. Tell you what's going on, okay? Because the Islamic religion is not a slave-making religion. The Islamic religion is a religion of freedom. That's right, brother. I know you don't like it. I'm killing the devil in you. You know, you're looking for the white man and the devil out there. Most of us got devils in here. Devil ideas, ideas that will not allow you to make progress in your personal life. That's the devil. I hope I'm helping, I hope I'm helping you. Not a tail and a pitchfork, <clears throat> but the wrong ideas, the wrong thinking. <clears throat> because a man is just like an automobile. That your car that you drove in here with, it has place for passengers. And you are like your automobile, and you have a place for passengers, but your passengers are called ideas. <laughs> That's your passenger, okay? And you get in your car, and you turn the steering wheel, you take your car to the store, to the school, you do this in your car, okay? You have an idea, and the idea takes you to the school. The idea takes you to the job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are failing, if I'm failing in my life, I have to first look where? Inward and see who gave me the wrong concept and idea of myself. So honorable people, I know I have to hurry up, but you see this right here? See on my wrist right here? There's a clock right here. <clears throat> but you notice in your clock, you have to take your clock and you have to set it forward. You have to take your clock and you have to set it back. Do you know what I'm talking about? If seasons change, they say what? Spring forward? And they say what? Then turn it back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you the religion of El Islam. That's not what they're talking about. When they use that in the culture, they're talking about advancing, set the clock forward. They're talking about getting the masses, blind masses, that will set their program, their business program forward to benefit the hands of a few people who run corporations. And when you start to wake up to the plan against your life, racism, sexism, you start to wake up and you hear these kind of conversations that you hear right now, then they want to turn the clock back. What do you mean turn the clock back? Turn your thinking back to the time when you were just an emotional fool. They're not talking about the clock on the wrist. They're talking about the clock in your mind. 
of which they control. They set it forward and they set it back. I lost my witness. I'm not trying to hurt any of your feelings. God knows this. Allah knows this. But I have to say things that may hurt your feelings because you need to be free. You understand? God has made you a free person. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to prove that God is the first freedom, freedom worker. Okay? <coughs> God, the first freedom worker. <coughs> the proof of that, when you get picked up by the police, they put handcuffs on you. Or they'll put a, what you call it, leg cuffs. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes they'll have, they'll have you tied like this to another prisoner. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? They have you tied to another prisoner, just like that. And most of us have no idea what they're saying. When you see a prisoner tied to another prisoner, you go on TV, you can see this. You know what they're saying? They are saying that these people have forgotten the lesson of the womb. In the womb, you were tied to your mother. Some people look at me so strange, like, what is this? man talking about. You tied to your mother like this. And being tied to her, you did nothing but obey. And that's why you have the eyes you have now, the ears that you have now, the brain you have now, because you were tied to your mother. So you come out in this world after nine months, you're 20 years old, 30, 40, 50 years old, and you are away from the original creation that God had you from your mother. Shake your head, yeah, if I'm, if I'm helping some of you. I don't see, I don't know if I'm losing you. Okay? So, what the prison is saying, when they handcuff us and they tie us to each other, they are trying to get you to go back to the original state that you were in, in here, for nine months when you were tied to progress, when you were tied to innocence, when you were tied to cleanliness. Oh, Lord, Lord. See, you can read the Quran. See, you can read it in English. You can read it in Arabic. You can read the Bible in English. You can read the Torah in Hebrew, right? But the most important reading is to be able to read nature. You understand? Read nature. When you look at a human being, can you read him? Every human being is words. Listen to me. I'm looking at this brother here. He's words. I see A, I see, I see C, I see B in him. But then I see something stronger than that. I can read in him that he's a father. You hear what I'm telling you now? I'm reading. I'm reading in him that he loves his son. That's his son that day. That's his son that day. Okay? So I'm reading. This is the most important reading. Not just words on a page. Lord. And this is what Muhammad the prophet is trying to raise us to. You have the Quran. Many Muslims have the Quran. They are Hathis. But they don't know how to read the society that they're in to improve. That's the most important reading. I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for you. We got a lot of questions. So anyway, it says, he's answered to the Arshul So I have to hear it uh, because I know you have to get back to your job. And it's talking about the earth and how the earth shapes. And in this verse, it's, it's speaking of the earth responding to Allah. You see? And that on one day, the earth against the misguided, corrupt man, the earth will behave as though it has received the revelation. I want you to think of this. This is no joke for me. Muhammad the prophet, didn't he receive a revelation? Let me see you shake your head. At least do that. Do you know the earth receives revelation too? Yes. When Allah tells us to rain, it rains. When Allah tells the sun to rise, it rises. When Allah tells the sun to set. So everything receives revelation. But we receive revelation on the highest plane. So the earth and all of these elements that's in man's commercial interest. These things are going to speak out against the abuses that man himself has done. Now, I don't say this to you, I'll sit down, because most people can't understand. And so we have to take this land and put it on the baby level, because I'm looking at these children. 